Now you're ready to float the bird, which is what we call inserting the PA catheter. Insert the catheter through the venous sheath to 15 centimeters, at which point the distal tip will be outside the venous sheath, and then inflate the balloon with 1.5 milliliters of air. Now, some important tips as you float the catheter. First, the balloon should be inflated as you advance, meaning when you move forward, and deflated if pulling the catheter backward. If you forget to deflate as you move backward, you can damage structures inside the heart. And if you don't inflate as you advance, proper positioning is more difficult. As you advance the catheter, you're going to see a pressure reading from the distal tip, telling you the location of the catheter. This is why it's important to ensure the pressure is transducing from the tip of the catheter before you begin. It is crucial to keep your eyes on the monitor, to advance in smooth 2 to 3 centimeter increments, and to know how to interpret the waveforms accurately. We'll go over the pressure waveforms in detail in the next lesson. Also, it's very useful to have an assistant record the pressures in each chamber as you advance, because some of them are drive-by only, so you won't have another chance to easily measure those pressures. As you advance the catheter, the first pressure waveform you will see is the central venous waveform, which is the same as the right atrium. Your catheter typically reaches the right atrium around 15 to 20 centimeters when using the right IJ. At this point, you'll inflate the balloon and advance the catheter with each heartbeat. Advance it another 10 centimeters or so until you cross the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle, or RV. The RV is typically reached at 30 to 35 centimeters. If you reach 40 to 50 centimeters and have not yet seen the RV tracing, you might be coiling inside the right atrium. At this point, you can deflate the balloon, pull back, and then try again, remembering to inflate the balloon as you advance. It is wise to avoid spending too much time with the catheter tip in the right ventricle because it can tickle the ventricle and cause arrhythmias. It's fairly common to see premature ventricular contractions as the tip is in the RV, but you don't want to cause ventricular tachycardia or right bundle branch block by staying there too long. After visualizing the RV tracing, advance the catheter another 5 to 10 centimeters, hopefully into the pulmonary artery. If you're having a difficult time getting the catheter into the PA, try a slight clockwise twisting motion as you advance to help curve the catheter up into the PA. If the RV is enlarged, it can take a longer length of catheter to reach the PA. The PA is typically reached around 40 to 45 centimeters. If you reach 50 centimeters or more and have not reached the PA, deflate the balloon, pull back, and try again. It can be dangerous to advance beyond 50 centimeters if you are in the PA but don't realize it, since the pulmonary artery narrows and you can cause trauma if you force the catheter into a small vessel. Once you reach the PA, congratulations! Your work isn't finished, but you've done the hard part. Once the catheter is in the final position, we'll want to use the plastic sleeve for sterility. Remember, on the PA catheter, you should have an introducer, a protective sleeve, and connector hubs to keep it in place once extended. First, deflate the balloon, then extend the plastic sleeve to cover the entire catheter, which will allow for sterile repositioning later if required. Some providers prefer to extend the sleeve prior to inserting the PA catheter to maintain sterility. Regardless of when the sleeve was extended, you will need to secure the plastic sleeve to the introducer sheath at this step. There are different versions of the plastic sleeve and each has a mechanism to lock the sleeve to the introducer hub. To protect the entire catheter, the distal plastic hub can be screwed down tightly after full extension. Ensure the venous sheath is sutured in place if you skipped this step earlier. Remove the drape, place a sterile dressing, and order a chest x-ray to confirm placement. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.